Hello and welcome to Mojitok, episode 11, the worst podcast on the internet. Today, by popular demand, I am receiving another household name of the weird Facebook movement, Eric's Creamy Memes. I'm going to introduce yourself, say a few things about uh, yourself, what you deem relevant. My name is Eric. I've been in the Facebook meme scene since uh, late 2015. I haven't really been on the scene that much because I got taken down back in 2017, but I've been running a backup page and been trying to get that booster back up and hopefully get a following there. Uh, yeah, plus I, I've seen you uh, on a lot of platforms. I see you make videos on YouTube, for example. Where else uh, are you? Instagram, I guess. And um... Yeah, I have a uh, personal Instagram that I kind of just post pictures of whatever I want to. Mm-hmm. Uh, but on YouTube, uh, I make videos every once in a while. But at the moment, I'm just trying to come up with ideas right now. I haven't posted a video in over a year. Yeah, I remember your funny skateboarding videos. They were pretty nice. Yeah, I, I appreciate that compliment. Uh, so, uh, what are you up to at the moment? Are you like uh, making new things or putting the memes uh, things on the back burner for the moment? At the moment, I'm just trying to gain back what following or a little bit of the following that I once had on Facebook because mm-hmm. the page is pretty small compared to what it used to be. It's like down the, it's like 27,000 likes at the moment. Oh. And I used to be at like almost 500,000. So it, mm-hmm. it's been kind of rough to get that back up. Oh. Um, but other than that, I've been work coming up with ideas for YouTube. I just got my studio set up so I can finally start recording stuff. Nice. Very nice. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. And um, what... uh, Have you been following the meme scene uh, recently? Yeah. uh, I've been using Reddit quite a lot, so I guess you could say I'm kind of on the curve of memes since that's where they usually come from. But I haven't really been posting a whole lot. I've just been kind of like keeping up and following with it. What are your favorite uh, memes recently? Favorite recent memes? Recently, uh, there hasn't really been a whole lot of good memes recently, to be honest. True. Also, uh, um, let's see. I oh, don't know, just like the the wave check one is pretty funny. I like that one. And mm-hmm. the, Air, the AirPods are pretty good too. Mm-hmm. Okay, and memes that you that you really hate that you wish did not exist. Uh, like an all time or just like recently? Um, recently. Uh, recently, the the Chungus meme is pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Um, and then. Uh, Uganda Knuckles is pretty pretty cancerous too. I, I oh, say. that's pretty old already. That's more than one year old. But uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's it's funny because I mean they were trying to. Yes. Go ahead. I was just going to say they're trying to do that resurgence on like New Year's. So. Oh yeah, I remember. But it was essentially on Reddit, yeah. but it it uh, it spilled on other networks as well. Like Instagram. Yeah. And it's funny because our tastes are like opposite, so it's going to be an interesting conversation. Because uh, out of all the recent memes, uh, the wave check uh, is like the one I like the least. <laughs> and uh, and I really loved the, the Chungus one. So uh, that's going to be a, a fun conversation. I like having uh, people with uh, opposite views. It's uh, much more interesting. And um, yeah, yeah I, I suppose you all, um, you have all also a negative opinion on the South America one. That's my favorite recent meme. I loved it. I haven't seen that South America. Oh, wait, yeah, I saw that one yesterday with the oh. person who accidentally posted a picture yeah. on Twitter or something. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. Love it. I haven't seen too many of them yet, though. Hmm. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not very widespread. 
Um, so, uh, what about of all time? You asked me uh, if I if I meant recent or all time. What are your favorite and your least favorite memes of all time? Uh, favorite meme of all time. Uh, I really liked the zombie, the Call of Duty zombie memes, where they like use the the voice clips and put it over like random stuff. Mm -hmm. That was like popular last year, beginning of last year, I think. Mm -hmm. I've seen a few of them recently too. I guess they're trying to make somewhat of a comeback. I'm not sure about that. Um, all the Donald Trump memes from like 2016 were pretty great too. I yeah. have to say, yeah, a lot of good ones. But that whole campaign was just a giant meme, and I loved it. Yep. Do you remember these nuts, the candidate? You got like eight eight percent of uh, of vote intentions. Oh yeah, that was I forgot about that. That was pretty yeah, funny. Yeah, so good. Um, memes that I didn't like, I guess. Uh, the that here come that boy was I didn't like that one at all. Okay, I, I refuse to post those pictures on my page. <laughs> okay. Uh, like Uganda Knuckles and the, the Moth Lamp meme was pretty bad too, in my opinion. <laughs> okay. Uh, other than that, I try to enjoy memes as much as possible. Yeah, same. Yeah. Um, there's that one with uh, CeeLo Green. Do you remember that one from like... Oh yeah, when he looks like a robot? Yeah, it was like a, like the Power Ranger suit. They kept posting and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I think it was from 2016 when he looks all, all gold, like a gold robot. That, that's that one. Yeah, that one. Yeah, it was pretty good. It was, like, it was the same time as uh, Trash Dove, too. Yeah. Oh, I hated Trash Dove. I don't know. I don't even know why, but I hated it so much. I have no idea why, but uh, I, I banned so many people who posted it. I I used to be like I used to uh, be a really a real dictator in the way I managed my my page. I've uh, I've calmed down a lot recently, but damn, I used to ban yeah. on average a hundred people a day. It was uh, it was mayhem. It was a massacre. I was I was insane. I was really depressed. So. Uh, It was maybe one of my ways to to cope. I don't know, but uh, it was stupid. It was really stupid of me. The the smallest shit. I ban people all the time. Was so it just like people posting like the gif or whatever in the comments? Yeah, it was uh, pretty much uh, anything that rubbed me the wrong way. You know, anything that grinded my gears. Well, you know. Uh, It, it could have been anything, uh, you know, when, you know, uh, I've always been kind of a thick skinned person and insults uh, rarely, you know, felt, um, you know, they, they rarely attained me. And uh, for a long time, uh, I, I didn't mind people making fun of me and insulting me and stuff. But when my page started, started to get big, uh, for some reason, it, it, um, it hurt me much more than before when I was uh, an anonymous guy. I'm, I'm not sure why, but uh, for, for a while, for, for a few months, maybe a year, uh, I became thin-skinned as my fame, in quotes, grew. And now I don't give a shit anymore. I'm back to my old self. And thank fuck for that. But uh, yeah, that's weird. I don't know. Power corrupts, man. Yeah, I, I mean, I never really cared about what people said You're lucky. about my page. Good. Like, I usually, whenever people said like "kill myself," I just joke around about it. I'm yeah, like, you yeah. gotta be able to laugh at yourself. Yeah, I mean, yeah, of course, that's the normal. Uh, that's the good way to to uh, to you know to respond and to react. And I don't know, I don't know what got to me. It was weird. But uh, you're lucky not to have uh, had uh, this phase. You're uh, you're uh, in the right. It's it's good to uh, let things slide. Just gotta uh, look past it. Be easy going and 
Yeah. It's just one person saying it. It's like, you know, there's people out there that want to support you. So. Yeah, just go with the flow and uh, embrace the meme. I don't, I don't remember who coined that expression, but uh, I think it was iDubs. I don't remember exactly, but uh, yeah, embrace the meme. And uh, yeah, it's either iDubs or H three H three. I remember both of them saying that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, H three H three has has become kind of weird recently. Um, I mean, uh, I I don't know about Hila, but especially Ethan is. Um, I don't know if it's because he, he's uh, he's depressed or whatever, but he's been really weird uh, since. Uh, since the, the the latest PewDiePie incident, I think, and the way he, tr he threw him under the bus, and the way he, he treated John Tron on the podcast, and also the episode with Bill Burr, ah, oh, so many things he, he he said and did rubbed me the wrong way. I I I'm, I'm feeling uh, difficult to appreciate his videos uh, anymore. I don't know if you share this uh, opinion. Yeah, uh, I mean, I I kind of stopped watching H3H3 a couple of years ago. Yeah. But I I, I watched his, his uh, podcast channel quite a bit, and I've noticed, like, his opinions on stuff got him in trouble a lot. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, your opinion is going to always be wrong to somebody. Well, so yeah. It makes sense. That's, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. I mean, in a way, that's good. If uh, if you please everyone, then you must be incredibly mediocre and, and boring. But uh, yeah, I don't like the the way he, he treated people who were his friends, like PewDiePie and, and John Tron. And uh, but yeah. maybe that's just me. But uh, yeah, it really rubbed me the wrong way. The podcast is not good, but they still make pretty good videos uh, on their channel. Uh, even if they talk about the Paul brothers way too much too much for, for my liking, but they still made a a few good ones recently, like the ones with the the TV show where the 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 parents spied on their daughter. Oh, if you stop watching, you probably haven't seen this one, but uh, yeah. I saw that video. Uh, whenever they show up in my newsfeed, I usually click on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one was pretty good. But uh, it's usually with like H uh, with Ethan, because like all the stuff he's been saying on his podcast, that's the stuff that's been getting him in trouble. Yeah. But um. Yeah, yeah. What are your favorite uh, YouTube channels? Um. Uh, recently. Yeah. Uh, it's been a lot of uh, PewDiePie, of course. Mm hmm. Um, I recently started watching uh, I'm Alex quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been watching a lot of tech channels for some reason. I don't know why. I just got really bored and yeah. started checking out tech. I they're, don't know. Yeah, they're good to binge watch. Uh, I really enjoy Cody Ko and Noel Miller as well. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a guy called uh, Curtis Connor. As well, he used to do like vines and stuff, but he uh, started growing his own YouTube channel recently. Okay. If you haven't heard of him, you should. You should I think it, you might enjoy him. Okay, I'll, I'll check him out. I, I haven't heard of him. Uh, Mostly just a bunch of like commentary channels that I've been watching recently. Okay. Yeah, I'm still not over the death of Vine. It it, it was really unexpected, at least for me, and uh, I. At the moment I was starting to get into Vine, it closed. <laughs> it was really frustrating for me. And uh, yeah. I hope the successor that they've been talking about um, that should be opening this year uh, will be as good. And because uh, uh, I've been like, you know, hesitating to go uh, on TikTok and... Uh, you know, what's your opinion on TikTok? Uh, I love it and I hate it at the same time. Yeah. It's like, there's a lot of funny stuff that comes out, but it's also a lot of cringy and weird people on there as well. 
Yeah. And also the constant ads that you get all the time. Yeah. Like uh, I get like recently I was getting nothing but TikTok ads for like a week. And yeah. it was weird. That's uh yeah. But I don't know. I mean I have an account on there and I've made a few. Uh-huh. Uh but I just it's mostly just like it's bad to say this, but like the bullying scene is what I find enjoyable. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. It's <laughs> like just people making fun of other people is, is what's funny on there. Yeah, it has kind of a 4chan vibe, and that's pretty cool. I mean, 4chan is like the the OG of the uh, of the modern internet. They they started so many trends, and uh, yeah, of course there was something awful before them but uh still you know and um do you remember uh vero did you create an account there it was supposed uh, to be it was supposed to be the new facebook it launched like one year ago something like that vero i don't think i heard of that oh they they made some uh well same uh th- th- uh they uh they put so many ads on like twitter instagram facebook and shit it was uh, at the same number of ads as the tiktok ads uh now and uh yeah vero true social it was supposed to be like like facebook but more personal and m- with l- fewer brands and uh with better monetization for the creators or some shit like that and uh they launched the app as a as a beta, and uh, I was one mm-hmm. of the, I was one of the beta testers, and uh, haven't really heard of it since. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I was wondering if it will take off or not. I remember. I don't know if you remember, but ten years ago there was diaspora, that was supposed to be the next big thing. Do you remember diaspora? I remember hearing about it, but I never looked into it, so I don't know what it's all about. Uh, it was um, kind of like Facebook, but there was no central servers. It was a peer-to-peer social network, so uh, everyone, uh, everyone's computer was uh, like a little server and uh, with little instances, and uh, so there was no central site and no... Uh, you know, it was just, um, it was hosted by the users, but it, it never took off. They they kept telling that it's going to, I remember in, in, in 2009, they say, yeah, it's going to be the year of diaspora, and then 2010, and then 2011, and then 2012, and I haven't really heard about it since. <laughs> 2012, I think, was. So you probably just got smoked out by Facebook growing on a rapid pace at that time. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Facebook was really. really like a big, lot of but... social media platforms just kind of disappeared because of Facebook. Yep. Remember Google Plus? <laughs> I don't think anybody remembers Google Plus at this point. Oh, that was awful. I got in. I got into so many fights. On Google Plus, you know, sometimes when you're uh, like on on a network and you get into fights in comments and it's about stupid shit, like that happens all the time on Twitter and shit. I got into so many fights with nerds on Google Plus. It was the the single biggest fight network. It was basically Internet Fight Club. I got into so many fights with total strangers about the most random shit. It was crazy. So I don't know if people actually use Google Plus. I've never seen anybody on there before. Yeah, it was lots I of... I thought it was just something forced on us by YouTube so we can make an account. Yeah, at the time that happened, Google Plus was already dying. Uh, but, uh, like, the first year, it was kind of exciting uh, when it was launched. And there was... Uh, it was mostly, like, nerds, like, computer programmers and people who worked in uh you know it and and stuff like that and man these people will fight you to the death for the most random shit 
and uh, they they always want to have the last word on on, a, on an argument. And it's it's crazy. Now now I don't uh, I don't frequent as as much nerds as I did at the time, but uh, uh, a big part of my uh, of my acquaintances were, were uh, nerds. Not sure why. And uh, that's how I got into Google Plus because it was invite only at first. Didn't they just recently discontinue Google Plus? Yep. I heard something about that. Yeah, yeah. There was there were huge security breaches. Like we always hear about the ones on Facebook, but there was a huge a, a huge security breach with so there was so bad with so much user info that got stolen by hackers that uh, the, it was so scandalous that they decided to shut down the whole thing to uh, kind of... So it's, uh, it's already gone now? Yeah. Yeah, nice. yeah. And it will be... Uh, I think it will be fully closed uh, by January 31st. Uh, now there's still a skeleton uh, network that's, uh, that's up. But uh, yeah, it has been closed for a few months now. Uh, yeah, Google Plus. Yeah, that was uh, I remember when they uh, forced us uh, that shit to uh, to comment on YouTube, and uh, the the creator of YouTube uh, complained about it, and it was literally his first YouTube comment. Like, why do I need a fucking uh, Google Plus account to comment on here? It was funny. Do you think Do you think Facebook can still last, like? A long time, or do you think it's gonna close soon? I feel like it's gonna be around for a while, just because, I mean, I don't think anybody actually enjoys using Facebook, but they do because everybody they know is already on it. Yeah. So it's just convenient. It's like, I don't want to use Facebook anymore, but I kind of have to to talk with friends how, like, I'm in the U.S. and whatnot, because it's just easier that way. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel the same. And I know so many people who feel the same. Uh, by the way, have you heard the, the, the rumors, the leaks that um, uh, started a few days ago about Facebook uh, secretly building a meme network called LOL? I haven't heard anything about that. Yeah, it was, on, I think, on TechCrunch. Uh, they talked about uh, this. They, they started an article. And... Uh, uh, Linus Tech Tips of all people uh, talked about it uh, a few days ago. That was surprising, and um, I don't know if it's legit or not, but it seemed pretty, pretty solid info. What What was it all about? Uh, I'm uh, putting. I'm. Uh, Facebook is secretly building LOL. A cringy teen meme hub, an article by TechCrunch from three days ago. Um, mm -hmm. After Facebook Watch, Lasso, uh, I, I never heard about Lasso, I don't even know what that is, and Instagram TV failed to become hits with teens, the company has been quietly developing another youthful video product. Multiple sources confirm that Facebook has spent months building LOL, a special feed of funny videos and Jeff-like clips. It's divided into categories like For You, Animals, Fails, Pranks, and more with content pulled from newsfeed posts by top meme pages on Facebook. LOL is currently in private beta with around 100 high school students who signed NDAs with parental consent to do focus groups and one-on-one -on -one testing with Facebook staff. So Facebook confirmed it. I, I just uh, saw the news. I didn't know it was confirmed, but a Facebook official confirmed that it is privately testing uh, LOL as a home for funny meme content with a very small number of US users. Uh, while uh, yeah, while those testers experienced it as a replacement for their watch tab, um, there's no plan to roll it out yet. It's uh, it will become a separate features 
in one of Facebook's main app or standalone app, so they're not quite sure what it's going to become. But uh, yeah, that's weird as shit, man. Because uh, I don't know if you've seen the, the trends, but um, Facebook is especially popular with millennials and with old people and young people like Generation Z. Uh, the, the, the user base is, is uh, actually decreasing. I suppose you're a millennial like me. Uh, of course. And uh, yeah, so it's basically us, the people in their uh, 20s, 30s and 40s uh, who are using Facebook and the older people and the younger people use it less and less. And uh, it has become not cool anymore for teens to use Facebook. The teens now use Snapchat and, and TikTok and, and whatever. And... Um, so Facebook is, has been trying repeatedly to uh, create uh, things that will attract teens, and that is the, the last uh, one. And I didn't know it had been confirmed. I thought it was just a wild rumor. I'm kind of surprised it's real. <laughs> I mean, if you look at it, though, it kind of makes sense, because it's basically, I guess you could compare it to Vine. Yeah. Which, I mean, pe people have been trying to bring back Vine in different forms with, like, Musical.ly and TikTok and whatnot. Yep. So, I mean, it'd be a good thing. But let's see how, like, the memes actually go because of how much Facebook actually hates memes. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. I, I don't even think that they hate memes. It's just humor and comedy that is targeted uh, in general. It not, it's not just memes. It's, uh, I remember I read their, um, their terms of service, like the, the full community guidelines, and they say that offensive content is allowed if it's uh, comedy, satire, parody, or humorous in nature. But that was a fucking lie. And they never respected that close, and I've, I've had so many jokes uh that i posted that were a little edgy but not too much and that got me post blocked once i got post blocked for 30 days for posting an innocuous uh funny picture damn they are uh, and it's weird because it's like in waves uh there are some times where they ban you for the smallest shit and there are some times when you get away with really offensive stuff. And it's like zigzag. It's up and down. I don't. I don't understand. Yeah. I don't understand any of this shit. And uh, it's not a the way I kind of stop stop posting stuff like that. Like yeah. I just try to keep my page clean that way. I stop getting post blocked all the time. Yeah. Because like I'd always get uh, pictures taken down for like being too offensive or like suicidal or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, me too. And uh, I almost stopped because of this. And uh, but, but it's hard because their uh, their guidelines are so fucking vague. Uh, you never know what is going to be over the line uh, or not. And uh, yeah, it's um, it's kind of a fucking minefield. You know, you 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 never know what is gonna set it off. It's not really a good platform to be sharing content on. The, the, it's, it's the platform with the most censorship of all platforms, like by far. It's uh, it's like the the opposite of Tumblr. Tumblr, you can get away with pretty much anything. I've posted the most extreme shit there, and uh, I've never got uh, anything taken down in ten years of using the site daily. It's uh, it's kind of libertarian paradise, or it was before they banned the porn. Yeah, it's like, is it was it just the uh, the porn stuff, or were they gonna start getting on the more extreme stuff as well? Well, there is speculation. It's not clear at the moment, but uh, it started when they got uh, acquired by Verizon, uh, which is a, a, a telecom uh, company from the U.S. And um, I don't know a lot about it, but it, it bought a lot of um, of websites. I think Flickr too. And um, 
yeah, uh, that that's when the thing started because they're they've been trying to monetize it ever since and repeatedly failing, and um, recently uh, the the app was removed from the App Store from the Apple uh, iOS App Store because it had too much porn on it, and that's when they decided to ban. Uh, I mean, it's not really banned; it's just hidden. You can still post. You can still share porn on Tumblr. I still see porn uh, regularly, but it's it's hidden uh, for most users, and you have to uh, click on a lot of buttons and uh, approve uh, filters and shit to uh, to see it. So uh, it's a move to be more uh, advertiser friendly, like what's happening on Reddit and what's happening on YouTube. All these big websites are trying to be uh, more friendly to advertisers and to spawn to uh, you know uh, VC because. Uh, it's a lot of um, business models that keep failing, you know? Um, yeah. Twitter took 10 years to turn a profit. And uh, a lot of uh, websites like this are bleeding money. Like uh, the, YouTube is has not made a profit ever, and they are losing millions every day. Like, that's why they're trying to be as advertiser-friendly as possible, is that they're losing so much money. They're, they have never turned a profit. It's, uh, it's a money hole. And the reason Google is, uh, is still injecting money into it is that it, um, they have quasi-monopoly on video sharing on the Internet. Like, it's the biggest site by a fucking landslide. And they are trying to keep it that way. It's just like McDonald's. Uh, put McDonald's everywhere, even in areas where there's not a lot of people and where it's not profitable to have a, a restaurant and they're losing more money than they're gaining because of brand recognition and because of image, uh, you know, reasons. And uh, it's going to keep going. Uh, it's going to keep going down for a lot of websites. It's uh, it's weird. And it's it's weird how it's not like that for everyone. Like Facebook is making billions and it's like it's the odd one out. Most social network websites are bleeding money all the time. And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of uh, Internet economy is not viable at all. And it's fueled by venture capitals who think that it's going to work in X number of years, you know, venture capital is all about the long term, but short term, it's a catastrophe. The internet economy is in shambles, and it has been for years. I mean, with with Facebook, I mean, it's you get ads like every few scrolls that you go, and like they recently integrated the ads in the Facebook Messenger too, whenever you have like three or more conversations going on at the same time. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, there's so many ads on Facebook now. I mean, it's, I don't see why they wouldn't turn a profit. Yeah, sure. But, I mean, there there are ads on, on YouTube as well, and they are not turning a profit by far. So, uh, it's not only about the ads. Yeah. It's, um, I, don't, I don't even really know. I'm sure there are some economists that uh, have put out, like, an anal- uh, analysis of the situation, but... Economy experts are often wrong. Economy is like the the hardest science. It's uh, they're they're so often wrong and they're so often contradicting each other. And it's it's funny, <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's uh, it's kind of weird how uh, so uh, it's like one of the things about the society that is the least understood, and yet it is the very skeleton. Of our society, I mean, uh, money, capitalism—it's what we all rely on to do our daily lives, jobs, uh, our our leisure activities, our everything is based on it, and it's so poorly understood, pun in, pun intended, that it's it's fucking weird, man. And um, yeah, I I think I don't know what's your opinion on that, but I think a lot of websites. Are gonna be moving to a paid model or a freemium model. Like you have a free version, like this very basic, and you gotta pay uh, for uh, the full thing. 
I think it's gonna be the new norm very soon. I don't know what's your opinion on that. Would you keep using, I don't know, Facebook, Instagram, or Tumblr, or whatever, if it was uh, like $5 per month, or would you stop using it? I mean, if I started having to pay for using social media, I probably would stop using it. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. There's been a lot of talk about like freemium services on like a lot of platforms. It's like, I don't know. It seems like it'd be a good thing, but at the same time, but it really just depends on like how they handle it though. Like, will we still have ads on there or will our, our service that we pay every month pay off those ads so we don't have to see those? Cause like, I don't want to pay for something and then still have to see ads everywhere. Yeah. 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 And that is uh, the, that is the general sentiment. I remember I've seen a poll recently uh, that said that if, uh, if Netflix started having ads, 80% of users would leave it, would leave the service, because it's for, for a lot of people, it's intolerable to pay for a service and still have ads in it. And it's, uh, it's, uh, it was the norm years ago, like when we, when we were young. Kids now probably don't remember that, but we, when we were young, uh, magazines that we paid money for had ads in them, newspapers and cable channels had ads all the time even if there were uh you know pay-per-view that's that that's that is kind of the internet really fucked that shit up it and it's one of the best things that the internet has done is uh is is break that model and i hope we're not going back to this but uh i see uh the the paying thing mostly as a good thing because if sites don't have to rely on public relations to uh to you know attract advertisers then it's likely that there will be more freedom on there that there will be less rules because they won't have to be like uh attracting uh you know the the the, the big uh coca-cola ads and shit and uh I I don't know though if uh, if a lot of people would pay, and uh, I I I know how it works. So I really see uh, how good it is. Um, so that's why I am subscribed to YouTube Premium, because when you use YouTube Premium, it's better for you because you have a lot of perks. You don't see any ads. You have a uh, YouTube Music for free. And uh, when you watch uh, a video that is monetized, the the creator uh, receives between three times and ten times more money than if it was monetized with ads. So that's a really good model. And uh, but I know that a lot of people who are on social media are like students who have no money at all, and, uh, and it's it's difficult for them to. Uh, to pay for uh, for anything really, even Netflix is a uh, is a serious expense when you're a penniless student. So uh, I don't know, and you know the, all the all the teens who would have to ask their parents, uh, why why would I have for you to use Tumblr? What even is Tumblr? Yeah, imagine being a teenager and try to explain to your parents what Tumblr is and why you need ten dollars a month for it. Good fucking luck. Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of a weird thing because, like, paying for services nowadays is, like, people don't really want to do that. I mean, because there's so many ways to get your media for free now. Because, yeah. like, with the, the YouTube Red thing, um, I mean, it's a, good, it's a good platform and all. But, like, there's so many ways to, like, do that stuff that you get already, but you don't have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. like the whole like you can download videos already for free to third-party apps and like you have ad block and all that that a lot of people use yeah. so like youtube red doesn't make a lot of sense to a lot of people because you can already do all that stuff yeah it makes it makes a lot of sense uh, for people who are mainly mobile users 
because uh, it's really, really convenient when you're on mobile. You get the small player uh, that, that does the PIP, and uh, it's uh, it's super convenient if you mainly watch YouTube on mobile. And which I am a person who watches YouTube like probably 50 50 50 percent uh, on my computer 50 percent on my smartphone and uh it really uh it's really more convenient on on mobile and um mobile users are becoming the majority on most social net networks and uh, i see for example when i look at my page stats it's um, 80 percent mobile users like the overwhelming majority of are uh, using Facebook on 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 a smartphone. Uh, for uh, YouTube, it's also the majority of people who are watching my videos on their phones, and uh, it seems that is the general trend uh, because social networks, most of them, are more convenient to use on mobile. I mean, it's like with with our phones they've become so advanced that they're basically uh, computers in our pocket so there's really no need to have a computer anymore yep. like i know i haven't even opened my laptop in probably over a year now so i mostly spend all my i do all like my work and and uh, like research watching youtube and facebook and all that stuff all directly from my phone just because it's so much easier to do that and you don't have to like go through like waiting times or anything like that because it takes a I feel like it takes a little bit more time to use a computer because it's a like I feel like it's kind of outdated I mean yeah. there's still a lot of stuff that you can do on a computer that you can't like editing videos and stuff like that or like yeah. doing Photoshop work is easier on a computer but yeah. even then you can still do that stuff on a phone it may not be as easy but I don't oh, yeah know. especially edit photos if you want to do some basic stuff like to make memes or stuff like that there are so many good apps now for that uh, I mean I nowadays I only use my PC for uh, playing video games editing videos and making music and that's it I never go to, to Facebook or Tumblr or reddit on my PC that seems weird to me now it's Smartphone only, it's so much better. And uh, I think that the PC is probably not gonna disappear, but it's, it's yeah, it's gonna be uh, for technology enthusiasts or for uh, content creators, like people who do Photoshop, photo editing, or artists, you know, and uh, or people who really need it for work. But for most people, it's probably gonna disappear because it's, you know, it. It's bulky, it takes a lot of space, and, uh, you know, it's expensive. And uh, with mobile, you have basically all the advantages of the of the PC with, with more advantages. If you're just, you know, if you just want a Facebook machine, then smartphone is the way to go. And also with, like, tablets as well. Yeah. It's basically just a computer that's more convenient. I mean, I switched over from using a laptop to an iPad recently. Yeah. And, like, it's been a much better experience because you don't have to deal with, like, loading times and all that most of the time for stuff. Yep. I know so many people who use an iPad as their main computer now. Like, a lot of my friends, uh, uh, you know, sold their laptops or their PCs. And they they are, like, iPad as their daily driver for basically everything. It makes sense. It makes it makes sense. It's what they're. It's what we are um, going uh, to. You know, it's the direction that the general uh, technology is going to. And uh, PCs are going to be just a, a thing for like nerds, for like people who use Linux, uh, people like that. You know. Yeah, I mean, I don't see computers going away anytime soon, though, because I mean, there's still a lot of advantages using it. Like more like. I guess for like students or people who do video editing, photo editing, or like yeah, programming yeah, yeah. stuff as well. Yeah, for professionals. Yeah, for people who do who use computer as a as a workhorse, 
for yeah for programming or video editing or 3d rendering that things like that but for the the average joe you know for joe six pack who just want to like the photos of his relatives on facebook and uh, browse maybe reddit for fun or stuff like that people who use it as uh, not creators but consumers of content it makes no sense to still have a pc it's just like another thing too is like with like tablets and phones they're like just as expensive as a computer is now too so it's not really financially right to have both of them anyway yeah 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 especially now since we we have all these smart tvs with uh, android on them when you have you have netflix app directly in your tv you don't have to connect anything to it and uh that's uh I remember I read uh, a thing, it was like one year ago, or maybe uh, something like that, uh, of, um, I don't remember, someone from Electronic Arts or some big video game company saying that consoles are going to disappear, uh, and uh, it's just going to be like... The, the the very idea of a console will, will will slowly disappear. Console sales have been declining every year for many years now, and uh, he say that maybe the next Xbox or the next PlayStation will be just apps for smart TVs and and tablets and stuff like that. I remember hearing something about that with like the they were gonna do like a new Xbox, but they're gonna get rid of the. Uh a disk drive on it and make it like a stream box yeah which it would it'd be a smart move because like you got the like playstation now with like the streaming service if yeah. you can stream all the games you want and you only have to pay like eight dollars a month and you can get like over a thousand games and you can yeah, buy them yeah. whenever i mean it's a it, good business move yeah it will it will really suck for people who have a slow internet connection but uh, but yeah, for people who, like me who have fiber, it's gonna be awesome. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's. I mean, it's a good thing though because like I mean, with I don't know if you heard about it, but like all the stuff going on with uh, GameStop, uh, kind of fading out, kind of like what Blockbuster did like mm -hmm. 10, 15 years ago. Yep. It's like they're they're digging themselves in a hole, like they're not bringing any profit or anything because mm -hmm. people mostly download their games because it's just more convenient and you don't have to like wait for to install the game you can just have it right there whenever it, like the timer goes off yeah whenever like midnight releases or whatever you don't have to wait yeah yeah, yeah. i mean for for people like me who live in a small space like i have a really small apartment just not having uh, to have a shelf to put game boxes is is great like I, I this is why i love downloads is because it doesn't take space in my house and i don't have all these game boxes that collect dust over time and uh you know the the 90 percent of the games i own now are just not material objects but but downloads like on steam and and uh Nintendo, uh, whatever it's called, Nintendo Store or some shit, and um, yeah. it's it's good to have physical objects for the resale market. That is gonna be something that I'm gonna miss. Uh, not uh, being able to go to like thrift store or yard sales and buying, uh, you know, old games that people are you know, don't want anymore and for a ridiculously low price. I've been doing that so much in uh, in uh, during the years, and yeah, that's something I'm gonna miss. You know, that was good having to, having uh, being able to uh, buy used games. That's gonna disappear. Yeah, so I I used to be pretty big on like physical games. I have a pretty big collection of them. But like recently, within the past year, I've kind of just stopped caring. And like digital, just more convenient. Just because you don't have to like leave your house, and you don't have to like constantly switch switch uh, this out of your systems and whatnot. Yep. It's just it's just more convenient. It saves you a lot of time. Yeah, 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 yeah. There are just, there are a lot of advantages, and it's it's like everything. Like every new technology, there's a trade off. 
the trade-off with uh, downloadable games is that the used games market is gonna disappear basically but it's really convenient you don't have to leave your house you don't have to wait and it's often cheaper with like a lot of sales even like on new not new stuff uh, there are a lot of uh, on the I remember on the PlayStation store or there were sales all the time on Steam of course it's like their biggest features it's what they're known for is the primary is the prime reason everyone uses Steam for all this uh, the sales that happen all the time I th yeah I think I think 99% of the games I own on Steam I got on sale I rarely if ever pay full price for a for a game since I have Steam what about you? Actually, that's another good thing about digital games is like they always do sales on them, yeah. and you can always get them at a great price because they don't have to deal with like the physical stuff, which saves a lot of money for them, and it makes us have to pay less in the end. Yeah, yeah, and uh, of course, cartridges break, CDs get scratched, but downloads are forever, or are they? That's what also one of the things that I've been thinking about uh, is that what if Steam closes? What's going to happen to all our games? I mean, that's that's the bad thing about like digital gaming is because I mean I, I saw a video over this. Uh, I think Scott Scott the Waz did a video over it uh -huh. a few months ago. Um, it was over like digital games. Like he was talking about the the Wii Shop. Yep. I remember his video, yeah. Yeah, like with digital games, like once they shut down, you can never download those again. And then like, what if your uh, game file gets like corrupted, then you won't be able to re-download it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I guess you could have like, uh, like ROM websites. You can just go and download it off of there. Yeah. But that's just less convenient than going on to the shop and just re-downloading it, plus also having to deal with maybe the chance of getting like a virus or something instead of it being an actual game. Yeah, yeah. Most of the games that I own on, on 3DS are downloads, not physical, and I'm, I'm, I'm you know, crossing my fingers that uh, I'll be able to keep downloading them in years from now, but it's it's not looking very good at the moment and uh, i don't know it's it's weird um uh who did uh, really good videos on this um man i can't remember his name right now but it, the guy who did freeman's mind um he makes such great gaming videos like he's one of my he's, i think he's maybe my favorite gaming youtuber um Accursed Farms. What's his name? You you know him? I don't believe I do. Oh, he's so good. You should check him out. Uh, if you like Scott the Woz, it's like he's kind of like Scott but older and nerdier. It's like so it's like in between uh, Scott the Woz and the Angry Video Game Nerd. You know, he's got the the best of both of them, and. Um, Ross Scott, that's his name, uh, for from the website Accursed Farms, and uh, he did a, a few videos on, on on that subject lately, and uh, they were really interesting. Um, do you play a lot of video games? Uh, not recently. Mostly, I've just been playing a lot of Hearthstone. Oh yeah, there's just a lot of. A lot of games out right now that it's mostly just a bunch of microtransactions and like mm -hmm. I don't want to deal with that. It's mm -hmm. so like I used to be a pretty big uh, Call of Duty guy, mm -hmm. but this it's just getting ridiculous with how they're monetizing games. <laughs> yeah, it's like Activision and EA, they're all getting really money hungry, and like it just sucks the fun out of the games that they make. And like it's like I've just kind of stopped playing games and I just watch YouTube most of the time now. Yeah, there's a huge backlash though against that and which is which is great. That started with uh that fucking Star Wars game uh when they went just too far 
and now uh, the all this uh, business model is uh, is getting a lot of backlash from users as well as from governments like loot boxes uh, are considered gambling in a lot of countries now and they're banned uh, especially uh, if the, the gamers are minors it's really dangerous and uh, so things are things are not only moving in the wrong direction there's some hope there is some uh, some good slowly phasing off the loot boxes but we're also dealing with a lot of uh, the SJW agenda stuff in video games now as well oh yeah it's like the, the Battlefield 5 controversy yeah yeah that was that was weird and that's not the worst that has happened recently but uh, yeah that was uh... did you see the guy who got his channel closed because uh, he beat up a feminist uh, suffragette in Red Dead Redemption 2 yeah, I saw those videos. He uh, also did, like, giving a black man to the KKK and, like, the, deporting a Mexican and all that. Yeah. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> 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 there was some really edgy 4chan stuff there. It was really funny. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he also beat up the KKK members and shit. I mean, he, he beat up, like, basically everyone for every reason. But uh, the, the, the video where he... Be, where he beats the feminist and feeds her to a crocodile. I mean, not a crocodile since it's America, it's an alligator. Uh, but yeah, that, yeah. that was funny as shit. And uh, the, 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 the back, the... Oh, man, Twitter is such a toxic cesspool. And they, they attack uh, everyone uh, all the time for the pettiest shit. And it's, get, it's getting worse and worse. And... I don't know. I don't understand why so many people pander to them like that. Because, like, the SJWs, it seems that they have a lot of power because they're loud. They keep screaming their bullshit on every website known to men. Or, sorry, known to person, should I say, to be PC. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> But they're a, ver they're a very small minority of the population. There are, there's like so few of them, if you really... Most people don't give a shit about this crap. Like the, the SJWs and the, and the, and the anti-SJWs on the other side are like such a small minority. I don't understand why so many people pander to their bullshit. Because they're like l probably less than 1% of people are SJWs, especially in the gaming community. Right. It's like with the SJWs, they, they may be a small minority, but they also have the loudest voice because they don't get to shut off for being PC, unlike a lot of other people who actually speak their mind. Yeah. Which they, with like a lot of like, the Twitter takes down a lot of people who aren't PC. Yep. Like if you if you say anything that like supports Trump, for example, or is like hate speech or quote unquote hate speech mm. against like the SJWs because it's their opinion, it's it's not it's wrong and you get silenced for it. Yeah, it's um it's not a good situation. Uh, yeah, I I don't really understand why they have so much power, despite the fact that. They usually are not really people who have a lot of money, so they don't. They're not, you know, top consumers, and there, there's, there's a lot of, there's basically very few of them. Uh, I, I don't. I never understood why so many companies pander to them, but really, it's like Facebook is it, it loves them, uh, Google. Uh, PayPal, uh, Apple, uh, Twitter, and shit, and everyone wants their approval. And I don't get why they're just fucking whiners who represent basically none of us, just their stupid, loud minority that doesn't, you know, that doesn't represent anyone really. It's just some theoretical bullshit 
all their stuff is just so theoretical stuff and it's so not real life they they never complain about real life problems you know ever seen an sjw say that uh the government should do something about uh, homeless people and you know the, the housing crisis uh you know real shit no but so they don't say anything about that stuff because it doesn't concern them yeah but uh w one yeah but one scantily clad uh, chick in a in a game then oh it's an outrage it's crazy. It's like, did you see recently with the Assassin's Creed Odyssey, they, they put out an apology because they put the main character in a straight relationship? Yes, I saw that. God damn it. And, uh, <laughs> and it, it was not even that. It was like the name of the achievement uh, was like uh, being being grown up or something. And that's what they, uh, they hated. They hated that being in a relationship was equated to being an adult and uh in the straight relationship was like yeah, yeah not uh not good not i don't know i don't i don't even you know i used to try to understand these people and it was not a good idea it's just trash and it's poison for the mind better not give them any attention and try not to listen to their bullshit. Hopefully, I think they so, like with the recent backlash, though, with like the Battlefield Five and like the YouTube controversy with the YouTube Rewind, oh, yeah. it shed some light on that kind of stuff. So hopefully, they'll stop pandering so much and do like uh, I guess uh, target the right audience with their media. Yeah, but the the mere fact that there is a backlash is seen as good by the corporations. Did you see that fucking hateful Gillette ad? Yeah, I saw that. Ah, that was horrible, man. So fucking racist. Like, all the bad guys are white and all the good guys are black. And, uh, you know, uh, if you were a white male, you're an asshole such horrible uh propaganda but apparently uh they knew that it would make most people riled up by by attacking white men and uh just saying that we were all trash just for being alive and being born white and male you should, we should all cut our dicks off and kill ourselves you know and they knew that it would have a strong reaction and a lot of people uh, would hate them for it and just you know it's uh, it's a thing in advertisement and communication that all press is good press even if people are against it the mere fact that a lot of people have been talking about them gives them a lot of brand exposure and uh, apparently it was intentional the people who make that shit don't believe in it at all it was not even to pander to the SJWs, but it was just to make people angry, and uh, that's um, that's why the the video got so many dislikes on YouTube, and they, they it's apparently seen as good by the uh, PR firms. So I mean, it's like with media nowadays. So it was like they never cover anything good. So yeah. how to get your exposure out there is you have to do something bad that makes people angry. Yeah, it seems. It seems that's pretty fucking messed up. Uh, I, 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 that, that's why uh, recently I've been so into the wholesome meme scene and and channels like Daily Dose of Internet that post like just nice stuff uh, because you know there's so many shit so many trolling on the internet people who are not not the good kind of trolling just assholes who are trying to ruin your day just for the hell of it between the sjws and uh whatever else you know the the corporations who try to, to buy everyone's minds and uh the 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 nazis and uh, all that bullshit everyone's an asshole now the internet used to be a nicer place 
Remember the time of lolcats and stuff like that? It was a good time. Back when it was all simple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and at the same time, it was a time where the internet was basically the Wild West. You didn't have to make an account on most websites. You could just type in uh, a random username and bam, you were in. Now it's even to comment on a news article you gotta be subscribed to a lot of shit and enter your name and do a captcha etc etc it's uh, uh it's uh it's a pain and it, it used to be uh freer and it used to be better you know the fact that so many websites are sent are, are you know talking about safety you know safety is a style Safety means censorship, and you know it's not it it's not a good atmosphere. It's not a good uh, it's not a good way to uh, to manage things. You know, being concentrated on safety, trying to make the internet a safer place, while it the only the only <laughs> result of that uh, is that it it has made the internet more of a cesspool than it ever was it's like it's just like the war on drugs that has made the drug problem much worse everywhere it's just the same shit over and over again people never learn oh. well it's uh it's time i think to uh talk about more uplifting stuff like stuff because this, this, this is gonna bum people out so much <laughs> so uh what's your favorite video game of all time um i really like it's maybe kind of basic i guess but i guess i'll say uh well i really like dark souls 3 and mm -hmm. bloodborne Dark Souls is such a great series. It's probably my favorite series to play. So it's, it has that steep learning curve to it, but it's yeah. highly rewarding once you learn how to play it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Plus, it's, you get so much time out of it. It's like, I've beaten Dark Souls 3, like, I don't know, 15 times, maybe. <laughs> That's a lot. Yeah. It's like I have every single weapon in the game and every single piece of armor. Yeah. Like I probably have close to five, six hundred hours into that game. Did you see the Dumb Shits Guide to Dark Souls on YouTube? I have not seen that. Oh, uh, it's so funny. I'll give you the link. Uh, or maybe you just you can just search the Dumb Shits Guide to Dark Souls. And it's it's a guy who who's making a, a super funny and and shit posty uh, but legit walkthrough of the game. Uh, it's really funny and it's well made. If you like Dark Souls and shit posting, you will love it. I'll look it up after this podcast. Uh, what um, what do you think? Uh, it's going to be the future of memes because meme, memes and meme culture have changed a lot throughout the years even if it has also kind of stayed the same in many ways what what do you think will happen soon or later i mean with memes they're really just reincar reincarnations of themselves yeah. It's like I was listening to one of your, your other podcasts. I don't remember who it was, but you guys were talking about like the I can have cheeseburger is just the same mm -hmm. meme as what we're, we're still getting, which is completely true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like we're just going to keep you making fun of, or I guess laughing at like the same memes, but in a different form. It's yeah. like it's the, the randomness that makes it funny. I, I guess you could put it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if I had to make a prediction, I would say that copy pastas will make a big comeback in twenty nineteen. I don't know why, but I'm I'm 
it's my instinct, you know, it's my intuition talking. Copy pastes are gonna make a comeback. I feel it. Oh, you know what would be cool? It would the the comeback of YouTube poops. What? That why, would be pretty good. Why why don't they make these anymore? I mean, I, I'm saying that I could make some. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you know... I mean, with YouTube poops, though, I mean, essentially they've just been reincarnated into, like, shorter videos, like like what uh, Grand A does. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, Dolan and Dark and stuff. That's basically YouTube poop, but in a different form. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They're pretty... They just kind of evolved. Yeah, it's true, it's true. Well, yeah, to be fair, most YouTube poops in the past were too long. When I see YouTube poops that are like five minutes long, no, I don't want to see that five that, that kind of content for five minutes straight. And uh, now the, the shorter ones are usually the better ones, uh, even if there's some exceptions. But uh, yeah, the ones like are like one or two minutes long are uh, are pretty good. Grande and Dull and Dark are both good, but I never. I never really loved anything that they've made. They they make constant, consistently good content. Like everything that they make is always decent. I've never seen a bad meme made by them, but I've never seen a really good meme made by them either. You know, it's uh, it's always yeah, it's um, uh, it's okay. It's always nice, but it's never really really good. Not sure why. I don't know if you share this sentiment. Yeah, I, I share the same opinion. It was just like household names that came to the top of my mind at the moment that I feel like everybody would know. Yeah, 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 but they're legit. They're legit. I, I consider them uh, true memers, and they're, they're, uh, they're uh, some of the good ones. Um, but yeah, I don't know why. I. It's like if they disappear, I wouldn't, I, I mean, if they disappeared, not the, the person, I don't wish death on them, of course, but if they stopped making memes, I wouldn't miss them, you know? I follow them, I look at their memes every day, but, you know, if they stopped pushing out content, the the, the meme scene wouldn't be very different. They, I, I think that what they, they're really, they're making really, um, safe in a in a creative uh, meaning content you know it's never really daring it's never really innovative it's um it's never bad but it's never great because it's not very daring and very bold and it's uh you know it's kind of predictable you kind of you know when i start watching a, a grande videos i know what's going to happen in the first 3 seconds you know I'm I'm never surprised. I I've seen a few of them. And I've seen them all. But they're good guys, and they're they're legit creators that don't peddle crap, that don't prey on you know uh, weak users, and they're they don't you know they're not Jake Paul. Far from it. They're some of the good ones, but. Yeah, I wish they would be more, um, yeah, more daring, more bold, more, uh, more creative, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like they're more just like the trendsetters, like they give you the main material and then everybody does their own spinoff of it and it just kind of blows up. Oh, yeah. Kind of like with the, uh, the PewDiePie has no legs meme with like him with a shopping cart and whatnot. Yeah. I'm not sure if they're, if they're really trendsetters. Uh, usually when they make a new meme, it's stuff that I've been seeing on, on Tumblr and 4chan for a few days. And uh, it's... Oh, not not really like trendsetters, but I mean like people who make it popular bring light to it. Yeah. I mean, they're, uh, they're in the middle of the curve, I, I, I'd say. They're uh, not laggards, but they're never innovators. And uh, I would like to see them create a, a, a new trend. That would be cool. Honestly, I, I respect them. And um, I would like to see them create new, a new trend. I bet they'd be pretty good at it. And they have the audience now. They have both uh, more than a million subscribers. So uh, they, could do some, uh, they could do some good. 
in the in the meme scene that at the moment is kind of uh, flaky and not really inspired. I, I like the memes that I've that I saw recently that made me laugh the most were basically memes from a few years ago that people had dug back from their graves and uh, not a lot of new memes are really good. But there are also so many new memes. Uh, it's it's not like back in the day, like there were that there was maybe one new meme per month and we we used it and overused it uh, as as much as possible. Uh, now it's like there's one new big meme every week at least. So uh, yeah. It's like there's just so many people on social media now. Yeah. It's like we get so much so much content. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And also with like the meme community, like it, it wasn't this big a few years ago. It's like nowadays if you go up to somebody they they can usually catch your reference. Oh really? Like, of like a meme. Well at, at least for me, so like if if I stay around like my age group between like I don't know, 18 and 30, I suppose you could say, they can usually catch on to, like, your, your meme reference. But, like, mm. if you did that a few years ago, they'd be like, what are you talking about? Hmm. I haven't noticed that, but maybe it's, like, in Europe, the meme scene is not uh, as big as uh, as in the U.S. Uh, I, I heard that... Uh, I mean, you're, you're from the U.S., right? Yeah, you're from California, I remember. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm from, I'm from uh, Missouri, not California. Oh yeah, but you you live in California, right? No. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I don't know why I thought that. Maybe because I saw skate skateboarding videos of you, and I in my mind skateboarding uh, is associated with California for some reason. Probably. Missouri. Oh, that's uh, that's in the that's in the middle of the U.S. That's uh, in the in north. Yeah. Okay. It's it's uh, Midwest. Okay. Uh, uh, not too cold at the moment. Uh, it's like thirty degrees today, I think. Oh, but same here. Uh, that's uh, four, yeah, yeah. That's uh, zero degrees uh, Celsius, and that's uh, what we've been having here. Also, uh, it's normal for winter. I hate winter. Uh, the the more I get old, the, the more I hate winter. I can agree with that. It's like I I used to love snow and all that when I was a kid, but now that I have to drive in it when I have to go to work, it's yeah. awful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I used to love snow when I was a little kid, and now I hate it. I hate snow, and I used to, you know, when when I was a kid. When I was young, I, I would see all these old people who were, like, moving to the warmer parts of the country. Or in, in, in every country, like uh, like in Seinfeld, when their, their, their parents moved to Florida and shit. And I, 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 I found that so weird. Because why? But now I really get it. <laughs> like, I wish it was summer all the time, man. Uh I don't like going out where when it's freezing outside. I used to not give a shit, and now it's like such so painful. My nose hurts, my ear hurts, and uh, I hate it. I'm more of a fall person myself. Oh. Least, it's like it's not too hot and it's not too cold. Ah, I used to be like that when I was uh, younger. It was a uh, yeah yeah. It was it was a transition when I was li when I was little. Uh, I liked, you know. The winter the most and then when i was young i liked fall the most and now middle-aged i'm i'm a summer guy uh, maybe when i when i get older i i prefer spring i don't know <laughs> who knows maybe but yeah the the the, the fall with the, the pretty colors and you you can wear cool sweaters it's uh it's the season when you have the most clothing options so uh people for people like us who like aesthetics it's pretty it's pretty important i like i like wearing sweaters despite the fact that i prefer uh 
the summer sun it's cool to have uh, more uh, more options for uh, wearing for stuff to wear I don't know right J nice jackets you know it's like that's the reason why I like it like you can wear whatever you want basically yeah uh, um, you've you've lived your, all, all your life in Missouri Oh, most of it. I was uh, born in Florida. Okay. And, and then uh, I had my grandparents lived in Missouri, so we moved here when I was like three or four. I've been here basically the rest of my life. Uh-huh. You like it? Uh, not really. I've been looking to actually move away here pretty soon, hopefully. I've been trying to save up money. Yep. Where you where would you want to uh, to live instead? Well, my end goal is I'd love to live in Alaska someday. Oh, so, so we're just talking about cold weather. Yep. But I don't. Know. I just feel like it'd be a good place to live because during like the summer, like the summer months, it's it's like sixty degrees most of the time. So it's like sweater weather uh -huh. all the time for a whole like some of the year. Mm -hmm. And like it's also like dark for six months out of the year, I think something like that. But so I'd prefer that over like having sunlight all the time. Huh. Yeah, I can I can imagine you uh, as um, Walter White in season five, you know, of Breaking Bad. You know, in his shed, you, you yeah making memes in your shed, peddling memes. <laughs> you know, meme dealer. Meme Kingpin. You never know. Yeah, I know. You never know. It's it's becoming a, kind of a viable career. Um, we, we, we talked about this in an earlier episode that has not uh, been uh, released yet because I'm so slow at editing. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's becoming kind of a viable career. I mean, and it's not really a new thing. It's being an entertainer. It's as old as time. It's like the king's jester or minstrels of all or, you know, theater thespians. Entertainment has always been a thing. It's one of the oldest jobs in the world. And meme dealers are kind of, you know, the new entertainers. There was a big boom of uh, comedians a few years ago. Uh, with people that are having the huge careers in that, like Louis C.K., Chris Rock, etc. And and now it's the memers. I, I think we're not we're not big yet, but I see a few a few people who are getting big from just memes, like Fuck Jerry, for example. Who's who's pretty yeah. good? Like for for a for a is is not really a I wouldn't call him a sellout. Uh, or or some um, something like that, you know. His content is pretty good. It's it's, it's decent. It's decent stuff. There's a uh, Daquan who's like huge. Um, uh, a few creators like that. Um, I mean, we we're we're talking about Grande. Grande is getting big. He's he's being invited in in uh, the Vsauce podcast and and uh, stuff like that. It's it's becoming a, a real thing, a, a real a, a real big thing, you know. Uh, it's uh, long gone are the days where uh, the internets were a series of tubes. Now it's uh, we're starting to matter. And I, you know, uh, uh, we're gonna be like the new the new uh, celebrities who give their opinion on 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 shit. Like, we're going to be the new Hollywood, maybe, you know, and uh, we're going to get interviewed by uh, late night shows and shit. And we're going to say we're going to shitpost live. I mean, shitposting is already becoming like I'm, I'm thinking about like Tim and Eric, awesome show, great job, or the Eric Andre show. Those had millions of viewers. And they're they're considered legitimate shows, so maybe there's also gonna be a meme TV show soon. 
that wouldn't surprise me at all. What do you think? I mean, with the, the rapid growing of the popularity of memes, I can, it could be very well possible. But with like the Eric Andre show gaining a lot of popularity, especially back in, I saw a big bump in his uh, career, like in 2016. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's just a, a, a genre that's getting more and more popular as yeah. days go on. Mm-hmm. So I could, I mean, you can make a career out of basically anything you want now with the internet. Yeah. It's like you can just be posting memes and making money off of it. And like with the whole like merchandising thing as well with like making t-shirts and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I see so many ads for meme t-shirts on Instagram, like stuff like the meme store and uh, stuff like that. Uh, I s- like that's maybe the the ads i see the most uh, when i'm on instagram is meme apparel it's it's huge already or at least there are a lot of websites uh that do it no yeah i even bought a so you see that stuff a lot with uh like whenever you go on youtube and you see like those meme compilation stuff the YouTube channels usually have like a, an apparel line. Yeah. They usually advertise that to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There are channels like Suit House who, uh, who, uh, who do uh, meme stuff or subreddit uh, browsing. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, right. it's, 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 it's pretty good. I mean, uh, it's, uh, I see it mostly as a good thing. I, I as a good thing. I'm not the kind of person who thinks that money corrupts everything, you know, uh, and I don't think that selling out is really a real thing. So uh, I'm hopeful for the future. I'm generally a pretty optimistic guy, and uh, I think it's gonna go well. I think it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be good. Uh, so. Um, In with uh, the memes, so I mean. You can make, I mean, it's easy to make a career out of it once you build up a platform for yourself. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about it not only as a creator, but mostly as a, as a consumer of memes. Because, uh, I, I, of course, I, I love uh, being, uh, you know, with, with this big Facebook page and all these followings and uh, uh, all the, the other accounts that I have, Instagram, Tumblr, Twitter, um, now Discord. I have a Discord that's getting pretty big. And uh, it's so great to be able to interact with all these people and uh, to uh, to bring them joy and to have all the messages of, oh, I love your memes, you make my day better. That's, that's great. But also, uh, I, I'm not just this guy who shares memes. I'm first and foremost a guy who looks at memes and, and laughs at them and, and, you know, likes memes and i share them because i love them and because i look at them all the time anyway so might as well you know do something uh, out of that but uh and so I'm, I'm thinking about this as a meme lover not as a creator um i'm not thinking about my own career i'm thinking about the fact that as a meme lover i'll be able to see more and more memes in the future and uh, on more and more of mediums and um, I hate bandwagoners you know people who think like if something becomes popular then it's ruined I don't know what's your opinion on that but I hate this mindset yeah, I think it's a pretty toxic way to look at stuff yeah. but I mean it's just like way to look at uh, I guess you could look at them as uh, they think they're superior because they knew the meme before everybody else. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's so stupid. It's so dumb. And I used to be like that. And I, I, But yeah, I used to be such a fuckhead when I was young. Damn. Uh, it's, it sucks to be old because it's hard. I can't run anymore. And it's hard to do, uh, to do, th- <laughs> it's hard to wake up in the morning and it's hard to, uh, lift weights. Now, uh, a few days ago, I hurt my hip by doing dumbbell curls. That's, 
something that wouldn't have happened to me uh, a few years ago. But yeah, I was curling dumbbells with my arms, you know, and I hurt my hip doing that. Fucking hell. But I'm, no st I'm not really stupid anymore. I mean, I I'll always be a fool. Uh, I'll never be a smart person, but... Oh, I was such a fuckhead when I was young, and uh, I don't, I don't regret it. Sometimes I think that I'm gonna give you an unpopular opinion of mine that I really believe in, and you're gonna give me your opinion. I think that uh, the fact that people have the right to vote at 18, it's not good. I would raise it like to like 25 or something like that. Because when you're 18, you don't understand anything about politics. I mean, some people do, but most don't. You don't have the maturity to understand really what's going on and who to vote for and why it matters. I would raise the, 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 the right to vote to like 25 years old. What do you think? I, I can agree with that. I remember seeing... Uh, some kind of article about that about raising the the age to vote. I don't remember how long ago that was, but I, I feel like it'd be a good thing because it gives people more time to mature in their political views mm. and to learn. Because you don't really start paying attention to politics until you're older, which yeah. what, when it starts affecting you is like whenever you turn eighteen, it's just like that's when it starts to affect you. Yeah, yeah. And also a lot of people like in their late teens and early 20s are students and you don't really have the time and you don't really want to, you know, you're the only thing about you, you're thinking about is studying and partying and, you know, having sex and booze and also, you know, studying because you really want that diploma, especially if you're in a country where you have to pay for university, which is mind-blowing to me, but there are still a lot of countries like that nowadays. And, um, yeah, you don't really have the, the, the time for, for that shit. And if you, uh, you know, if you don't work, you shouldn't vote because you learn so much about the world uh, when you enter the workforce. I mean, you also learn about yourself, of course. Uh, but, yeah, when you start working, you learn so much stuff about the world, how the world works, why, etc. When you're a student, you know nothing. When you're a student, you're an idiot. You're just, you're just you know, a sponge for information. And, and you're not done yet. You're not done cooking. People shouldn't be able to vote before they had their first job. And recently, I saw that uh, some lawmakers in the in the USA are pushing to uh, lower the voting age to 16. And when I saw that, I was like, no, what? I mean, it doesn't really concern me because it's not my country. But I was like, oh, no, I hope it doesn't become a trend. I hope it doesn't pass because so many countries around the world want to imitate the US for some goddamn reason. And oh, I hope it doesn't happen. I didn't hear anything about that. Yeah, it was uh, it was a couple of years ago. Uh, I I heard about that a lot. You know, a lot of a lot of young people were saying, yeah, if more if uh, if more teens were uh, able to uh, the right to vote, uh, Trump wouldn't have been president. And there was a big push after the election of Trump uh, to uh, to allow younger people to vote and there's a fair argument about that it's like the younger you are the higher the stakes is for you because you know if you're old and there is a shitty system in place you won't have to suffer it for a lot of years but if you're young the decisions that are that are made now will matter for all your life so that's a fair argument it's not stupid but still your I mean, it still comes back to what we were talking about previously, about you don't know what you're talking about until you get older. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've met a few teens who were, like, really mature and, 
understand you know a lot of shit but i've the majority of the teens i've met um uh, i mean no <laughs> just no yeah 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 and uh yeah 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 we're we're already given giving uh teens the the right to drive you know and and cars are you know basically they're so dangerous there are so many accidents every year it's one of the leading causes of death in the world car accidents and uh the cars are probably going to become safer with the self-driving cars it's also one thing that I don't understand. People are afraid of self-driving cars piloted by robots. But do you really think it's going to be less safe than letting the car be driven by people? I don't think so. I trust computers, personally, much more than I trust people. I don't know what's your opinion on that, but uh, I think self-driving cars are going to be much safer. There's still going to be accidents, of course, but way less than with people. Uh, I mean, it's kind of like a give and take situation because, like, computers, they, they can be a lot better drivers than humans because they're not going to make, like, human errors. But at the same time, computers can also malfunction and that can cause some serious problems as well. Sure. But, I mean, when's the last, when's the last time that your computer malfunctioned? It, it's... And it's rarely a thing anymore. And the, the, the computers are going to be simpler, you know. I mean, not maybe not as crude as the ones in, uh, in graphic calculators, but, you know, probably have the, the processing power of a, of a video game console. You know, it's not going to be some really complicated stuff because they, they only have to do one thing at a time. And most of the accidents are not due to chance they're due to people being like inebriated or on drugs uh, actually the, the 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 leading cause of accidents are people who are tired and who who fall asleep at the at the at the driving wheel or who who are too tired and because of their uh, they didn't sleep enough or their uh, you know their, their reflexes are much slower and uh, of course they're distracted driving you, you if you look at the curve of um, of car accidents, uh, cars are getting safer and safer. So uh, the the number of deaths is not augmenting, but the number of accidents uh, when the the iPhone was invented, it's like there's like a spike, and and you know, distracted driving, texting and driving, is a is a big problem and has been for the past 10, 12 years, and. Uh, you know, computers and robots don't have all this. They don't get tired. They don't get drunk. They don't smoke weed. And, uh, you know, when I see a computer that gets drunk and smoke weed, this will blow my mind. It will be the coolest shit on Earth. <laughs> you know, like, like Bender from Futurama. Oh, my God. I'm waiting for this. I'm, I'm really waiting for this because all the AIs right now are you know so um how do you say sanitized like remember what happened to the microsoft uh teen ai that became a, a nazi uh, sex robot in 24 oh, hours yeah. it's, it, uh, i remember that uh yeah that was uh so uh they're very wary about this stuff and i don't like you know one of the reasons that i don't use uh, alexa or the google assistant as much as I, I would like to, is that they don't say fuck. And there's so much emphasis from Google and from Amazon on these uh, AIs being like, not not people, but the conversations being natural. And, you know, you, you're supposed to have, to be able to have conversations uh, to have, to, to, it's supposed to feel natural, you know? And for me, uh, uh, someone who doesn't say fuck or shit sounds like a robot too much. Let let them swear. Uh, IBM Watson, I think it was IBM Watson or some kind of super AI. A few years ago, they hooked it on, um, what is it? Uh, the Urban Dictionary. 
they made an AI, they made a supercomputer AI learn the urban dictionary so it would be able to uh, use slang to be uh, to sound more natural and to sound more human. And they took down the project because the AI started swearing too much. That's a, such a loss. That's that's such a stupid decision. Let Alexa say fuck. Come on. You know if they if they make an a, a, an assistant like Alexa or the Google Assistant that says fucking shit, I buy it instantly. No hesitation. I feel like that would be a good selling point too for a lot uh, of people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, an, an AI that uses slang and swear words, I buy it the day it, we, it is released. I mean, unless it is thousands of dollars. But, you know, if it's priced competitively, there's no question. I buy it at the moment it is released. The day it is released. I pre-order it. I'm against pre-orders. I think it's a scam. I think people should not pre-order games or, or movies or technology or anything i hate pre-orders but i would pre-order that you know because i'm so i i would just to make a point you know just just to uh shut up and take my money you know right wouldn't you uh, of course i would do you use uh any of these uh i use google assistant uh quite a lot uh, but I use it less and less because I, I, it, it, it feels to me that it's going it's becoming less and less competent. I don't know. I think they're trying to cram too much too many features on in it. Do you use any do you have any assistant at, uh, at home? Uh, I have an Alexa. I just recently uh, unplugged it and put it back in the box because I never used it. Mm -hmm. And it's also another thing is I saw uh, do you know the YouTuber of some ordinary gamer? Uh, heard about him. He does like the, the dark web browsing series. Oh yeah, the India is from India or Pakistan, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I saw some, Indian, dude. yeah, I saw some of some of his videos that were really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember him now. Uh, yeah, I They just released a video I think it was yesterday, um, over like uh people on like the dark web hacking into like Alexa's and whatnot and like getting your information because like with like how homes are becoming with like the smart home stuff like you have everything connected it's not really safe to have all that stuff because it's like so easy to hack into and take over yeah 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 that's uh that's a concern I doubt that most people I doubt that most hackers would be interested in that but uh, that's all. That's always a concern with with every piece of technology that is connected to any network. Any, any I mean, you can have network. everything connected in your house nowadays with like having like the locks on your doors and all that. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty dangerous. Yeah, like somebody yeah. can hack the door locks and then just get into your house. Yeah, yeah. There's a big trend of people hacking into cars. Like, uh, they um. They replicate the 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 wave uh, or the code of the key fob, and uh, they can hack into any car with the generic uh, stuff. But uh, yeah, the same. I use my Google Assistant less and less. Like there are some sometimes where when I when I you know when I don't have my my phone, um, or like when my hands are dirty, like when I'm cooking, that's when I use my assistant. You know. Like, uh, oh, how many grams of butter do I have to use now? Uh, because I have my, my hands in the, in the, you know, in the food and I, I don't want to watch them and go back to my phone and scroll and shit. So that's when it's really useful, uh, when I can't use my hands or when it's, it's complicated for me to look at my phone. But most of the time, it's just faster or more convenient to use your fingers, you know? Right. Uh, when I when I'm like taking a shit and I forgot my phone, I start as I start yelling across the room questions to Google Assistant to uh, avoid boredom. 
but right. yeah, when I have my phone in my hand, it's it's not convenient at all. Uh, see, I, I just don't really. I mean, I can see. I don't know where I was gonna go with that, but it's just with like all the assistants now. It's like talking the talking the robots and stuff. I don't know. It's just it feels like a a weird sci-fi movie. Yeah, yeah, I, I think like it was it, talking yeah. to them, trying to get like information and like about like your phone or like the weather and stuff, which is fine. But like the way that they're like trying to push it to like being a more conversational piece is just kind of weird. Mm. Yeah, did you see that uh, that demo uh, last year uh, when the the assistant made a phone call, like to book an appointment for a hairdresser and, and and shit like that i did not oh it was uh it was great i mean i loved it there was there were a lot of weird ass sgw types who said that he was dangerous and and weird and uh unsettling for i don't i didn't understand the controversy but um yeah basically it was uh the google assistant making phone calls for people and um You know, the the assistant was programmed to say stuff like, um, "Wait a minute, um, let me check." You know, it 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 was so not like a robot that you wouldn't be able to guess that the co the call was made by a, an artificial intelligence, and uh, it was mind blowing. I personally loved that. Um, But uh, yeah, there was a lot of backlash. It's it was it was weird, to be honest. It was it was weird. But I think we're gonna get used to it pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, it's probably gonna become a big part of our lives about with our, our systems, like being in our phones and having like different objects like Alexa and whatnot around the house controlling everything. I mean, it's convenient to have all that stuff. Yeah, it's not that convenient to use your voice though, because uh, you it's easier and faster to do things with your hands. There are some exceptions, like setting up an alarm. That's one of the big things that I use Google Assistant for. Like, okay, Google, set an alarm for 8 a.m. and it's done. I don't have to grab my phone, search for the uh, clock app, then go to alarm, then enter the hour, then confirm. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's it's faster to use voice for this, but it's still for 95% of things, it's not uh, very useful. And sometimes the things goes off when I'm watching a video and sometimes and someone says, uh, uh, you know, something that vaguely resembles uh, the, the Google or something like that. And the, the assistant goes off at least once a day when people say random shit on YouTube. But also often I'm saying, okay, Google at my phone and it doesn't wake up. That's a pain. Uh, yeah. There was a huge uh, problem uh, with uh, Alexa uh, because uh, it used to wake up for uh, any any voice and do what anything said and there was an ad on TV where a guy said uh, hey Alexa play uh, Despacito or I don't remember what song it was and so many people at home uh, got their uh, got their uh, the speakers blasting uh, music when they uh, were just watching the, the TV and the, the ad came on and uh, yeah there was also that uh, that Burger King ad that got taken down because of it about, I don't remember what he said There was something about like the new burger that they had. Oh yeah, I th yeah 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 yeah, and you could order a burger through Alexa. I think that was it. Or uh, you know, uh, uh, a guy uh, who who got home and he received a lot of parcels, like so much random shit, and he says, "Oh, I didn't order this." And it was his toddler who talked to Alexa and ordered a bunch of shit from Amazon and it got delivered at, at the guy's house. Like there was like thousands, no, not thousands, but hundreds of dollars of the, the most random crap 
that the toddler ordered an, uh, uh, with Alexa during the day when the guy was at work or some shit like that. Oh my god, it was hilarious. Yeah, that's another problem with it too. But yeah. I mean, they've started fixing that with like the voice recognition stuff, like with Google Assistant, which is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. And what about the um, the stores where there's there's no employees and uh, you know you go with your phone and uh, there's one that opened the the, the first one opened in uh, I think Seattle. Uh, I I know it was in the northwest of the U.S. I, I think it was in Seattle. I'm not sure. It might have been Portland or, uh, but it was around there. And um, yeah, there's a. I think it's Amazon Go, and you enter the shop. You scan your uh, your smartphone, and then you just put stuff in in, in your you know, uh, bag, and then you exit the store and. It's automatically, uh, you know, you it's uh, automatically uh, comes from your account balance or your PayPal or whatever. I remember seeing something about that like a month ago, I think. It's like it's an interesting concept that it cuts out the middleman, but yeah. I don't know. I mean, less jobs for people. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, it's kind of. It, it will have to be like that because with more robots and more things that getting that are getting uh, automatic like uh, the assembly lines for cars now are mainly robots and it's more and more uh, there's uh, I think some phone company is making robotic assembly lines for their smartphone I'm not sure but I think I mean a lot of people are gonna lose their jobs and uh, there's not a lot we can do about it, I think. I mean, still, uh, there has to be people who, you know, put things on the shelves, at least for the moment. Maybe it's going to be replaced by robots soon, but, uh, uh, and people who, like, do maintenance and uh, people who, like, build these stores. But, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's the inevitable future that it's going to happen eventually. But like at the same time, I, I mean, how are they going to handle the people who get put out of jobs because of that stuff? Yeah, that's a big question that nobody wants to answer, and that's uh, that's uh, you know that's like global warming. We don't like to think about it. We don't like to talk about it. We're like doing like the like the proverbial ostrich that puts his head in the in the sand, and. Uh, it's hard because there's no obvious solution and all the solutions that have been proposed all have some f basic major flaws and uh, I hope we're gonna find a solution but I'm not so sure and it's gonna be hard and you know the road is gonna be rocky and uh, with a lot of obstacles to overcome because it's obvious that robots are gonna steal so many jobs real fast it's already happening and it's gonna be happening at an exponential pace and uh, I see it in my in 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 my neighborhood there there's a kebab where the meat is cut by a robot it's not even a big kebab shop it's a small thing but there's a the meat is cut by a robot and yeah I see more and more uh, supermarkets around me where there's like less and less cashiers and more and more, uh, you know, uh, self-checkout uh, computers. At McDonald's, they they're, they don't take your order anymore. It's all computers. And uh, it's going to be more and more like that. There's not really... I mean, unless you're a fucking Luddite or a anarcho-primitivist, you there's more advantages to it than drawbacks. People are gonna get more, uh, less less of these fucking demeaning jobs, and uh, you know, if garbage men, builders, and all these hard 
jobs get replaced by robots, it's hard to argue against it. Some um, a lot of people say that uh, the in the universal basic income is the only real solution to that. But then, where is gonna where the where is the money gonna come from? You know, more taxes, a tax on robots, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the more that I think about it, the more I realize that that stuff has already started happening because I. I forgot about like the, the self checkout stuff with like McDonald's and whatnot. It's like a lot of that started happening around me, and I'm from like a smaller town too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in in the U.S., more and more cities have allowed driverless taxis. Uh, I don't I don't remember which companies is that. I think it's Lyft, or it, it might be Uber. I but uh, yeah, yeah, driverless driverless. Oh man, driverless taxis are becoming more and more commonplace and uh, robots are all around us already and it's just gonna be accelerating there's no way out of it i mean, and, I mean unless... the good thing about it though is it's taking the jobs that people don't really want to be in so they could work somewhere else but yeah. at the same time where where is somewhere else yeah yeah but also, they're taking a lot of jobs of people who are like underqualified and who don't have a lot of job options. Like I know because I'm one of them. Basically, I have the chance to have started this entertainment car career thanks to memes, thanks to Facebook. I'm so grateful to be able to. Uh, I mean, I barely live off it. I barely make enough money to. Uh, buy food and pay my bills but still it's huge because I'm, I I have no diploma I didn't study anything because I'm a dumbass let's be honest and yeah for most of my life I had stupid jobs like in burger joints and, and shit like that I've been a factory worker I've been a warehouse man and uh, a lot of these jobs that are that are getting automated uh then what will people like me be able to uh, do, you know? If we can yeah. get the... the the, Because on, on one hand, yeah, it's kind of demeaning and it's kind of to be a janitor, you know? It's, it's not fun, it's not a great job, it's not rewarding, um, you know, unless you have some kind of OCD and you get off on cleanliness which I know some people who are like that but sometimes you don't have the choice sometimes it's this or nothing you know like people who, who just got out of prison and are trying to get rehabilitated they don't have a lot of job offers and often it's shit like that you know you know, janitor or a, you know barista at, at Starbucks and I'm saying that but I'm, at the same time I know so many people who have big prestigious diplomas and who do these kind of jobs because they cannot find a job according to their qualifications I know so many people who make burgers at McDonald's and shit like that and they have you know studied for five years and they have their prestigious degree from some law school or, or medicine or whatever. I know a guy who has was uh, um, uh, was studied nine years and he has a PhD in genetics and he's a uh, yeah he works in a small um, bookshop and he books puts books on the on the shelves so it's not just underqualified people who have no choice it's also overqualified people who, are, who have no choice it's a strange situation we're in it's like there's just too many people in, yep. in the workforce now that it's hard to get people who want to be there because like you have more people going into those kind of jobs and like the people aren't retiring yeah. So it's just kind of a hard situation on everybody. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, this is gonna be this is gonna become a problem like real soon because the baby boomers are getting old and there's gonna be so many old people. Old people are outnumbering young people in almost every country in the world except countries where there's war or famine or some kind of catastrophic uh, con conditions. But the, 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 um, the child uh, rate is decreasing in the whole world. Uh, there are fewer and fewer children born in even in African uh, countries, you know, the, even in the, the developing world, um, there are less and less children born. And um, yeah, it's not already the case in the in the in the USA. I know that uh, in the USA, the biggest age group is millennials. But here in Europe, it's boomers there. They are outnumbering every other age group by a landslide. And uh, it's going to be, you know, a lot of them can't be part of the workforce anymore. They're too old for, to, to work. But, uh, you know, some some people will have to, to pay for their retirement pensions. And uh, it's, it's becoming a real problem here. And governments are trying to find solutions. And they, they, they can't. That's why they are importing so many immigrants in all of Europe. That's why a lot of people don't don't seem to understand. It's because we have too many old people, and we have not enough people to pay for their retirement pensions and to, uh, you know, for the workforce and, and shit like that. And uh, and it's gonna become a, a a problem in the whole world. It's already a huge problem in Japan. I don't know if you've seen what's what's going on in Japan recently, but uh, uh, the. Shinzo Abe, seventy fifth, fifty uh, seventh. Excuse, I got it backward. Shinzo Abe, fifty seventh, prime minister of Japan. I think he he he's making now. Um, is is uh, the government is paying for a uh, mangaka and uh, people who make animes to uh, incitate um, young people to have more children. Because people aren't fucking anymore in Japan, and they aren't making any more children, and the birth rate is abysmal, and yeah, too many old people, not enough youngs, and yeah, most of the world is gonna become like that soon. There's gonna be a wave of old people, especially since with the progress of medicine, hygiene, technology, people are getting older and older. There's going to be more and more people who reach the age of 100. It's theorized that half of the people born around the year 2000 will will live to uh, 100 or older. So, uh, yep, it's going to be the gray wave, the, you know, we're gonna have to deal with that soon. It's just so many people, and not not enough people dying off, and not enough people having kids. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, if people keep having kids, uh, there's the danger of overpopulation also. So uh, it's not so bad that that the birth rate is declining it's just that there's going to be you know it's it's kind of necessary because we're the the current uh model is is not sustainable if we keep get if we keep you know increasing if the population keeps increasing we we consume too much we eat too much we produce too much and if there's more and more people it's we don't have enough on the on the planet to to keep you know that so uh, it's kind of a good thing that the birth rate is decl declining. It's, you know, overpopulation is, is scarier than what's going on right now. But there's going to have to be a, a transition period. Um, and that transition period has already started. And man, it's going to be hard. It's like another thing is like with not children not being born it's like a lot of people can't even afford to have kids yeah 
Ja, ja. En uh, ja. More and more, people, more and more uh, millennials choose to have dogs instead of children. And, uh, it's just uh, more viable. Yeah, it's less expensive. Cheaper and easier. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's not just, uh, yeah, yeah. And it's not just the money, it's also the, the time. Now uh, that uh, men and women have careers, um, it's, we don't, people don't have enough time to, cons to, uh, to raise their children properly. And, you know, it's a concern that, uh, children spend too much time in front of the TV and, uh, that, uh, parents don't have the time to educate them. So, uh, so also they, they get to have to get to pay for, uh, uh, uh um, you know, uh, how do you say, um, man, um, What's the name for the, the, the people who work to uh, take care of children instead of the parents? What's the fucking name? Uh, daycare workers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's not what I meant, but uh, daycare workers also uh, uh, can do that. Um, I, I, I'm losing my English. Uh, I can't find the word, but I, I think you can, you, you can guess what I mean. And, um, How about like a babysitter? Yeah, that's the that's the word I was looking for. So um, yeah, you 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 gotta find a babysitter that you trust. It's not always easy. Often it's people who do this kind of job because they have no other choice. So uh, they may not be the 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 best people to raise your kids. And it's uh, you know you get out of one problem to fall into another one and it's it's just it's just a, a big set of trade-offs and there's no real exit to this situation there's like bad choice number one or bad choice number two <laughs> and we're trying to you know we're trying to minimize the damage but uh there's gonna be some damage what we need is flex tape <laughs> There's just too many form factors nowadays to go into stuff like that. Like you get you get so many decisions that you never even would have thought of, like even ten years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you see that uh, that uh, bucket of twenty um, seven pounds of mac and cheese that lasts for twenty years? Uh, that sell that sold at Costco. Yeah, I saw that. Oh, uh, that this is epic. It's, it, it reminded me of uh, fucking uh, idiocracy, <laughs> but uh, but in a good way. Yeah. One hundred and eighty servings of mac and cheese. <laughs> I, I I posted the link on my page, and so many people say twenty years. Oh, I would eat that in an afternoon. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> How much were they asking for it? Uh, ninety dollars. So that's. $90. That's 50 cents per serving. That's really reasonable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bucket. Reminds me of the the first episode of the IT crowd. I don't know if you've seen this British show about people who works with computer. I haven't seen it. And uh, yeah, in the in the first episode, it, there's a guy who orders a bucket of fried chicken, but it comes in a real bucket. It's like this huge thing. Um, what uh, what TV shows do you like, if you even watch them at all? Uh, I don't really watch a whole lot of TV, but when I do, it's usually like uh, The Office or Family Guy, South okay. Park, stuff like that. Mm. Just like comedy stuff. Yeah. Do you watch uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia? Yes, that's another one that I like to watch too. So great. Oh, oh, and what about Curb Your Enthusiasm? You probably should, you probably would like it. I haven't watched that one. Oh, I'm, uh, I, I think you, you would like it. I think you would like it. It's from the guy who made Seinfeld. And it's, uh, it's a lot of, it's a lot of improv, you know, and it's just, um, uh, 
this guy who keeps getting into awkward situations with 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 assholes and it's so funny it's so it's it's like you get you get some some second hand embarrassment but it's so funny i mean i i love it larry david is a genius do you, do you have have yeah do you have something else that you wanted to uh talk about we're uh we're getting on the two hours of uh, show it's uh, show it's gonna be soon time to wrap it up um uh, not really it's just i mean i got the only thing i really want to talk about is like the my youtube channel i guess about the stuff i have coming up What's coming up? What's uh, what can we expect for the future on your YouTube channel? I've had a lot of requests recently, actually, about to start doing more reviews mm-hmm. over stuff. Mm-hmm. Like when I had that the Taco Bell one, people asked for more stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, um, if anybody has any requests for like what I should review, you should just message me on Facebook, and I'll get on it. Yeah. I'll try to find something for you to review. And uh, yeah, if anyone's uh, who's listening, uh, uh, he has an idea. What what else? Well, at the moment, it's just thinking of doing just reviews and like commentary videos at the moment. But I mean, I have I have lots of stuff on the back burner that I like to try eventually. Oh, nice. Do you plan to do like reviews of everything, like video games, movies, food, or you, do you want to concentrate on one specific segment? I feel like concentrating on just one thing would be a smart idea to help grow the channel, and then I can just yeah, kind that, of that's true. go off and do whatever. Yeah, it's often better to uh, concentrate on one thing, especially in the beginning. It's 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 uh, it's good to uh, to do a. Uh, kickstart a, a channel um so 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 food then probably so hmm. okay so that's the most popular video on the channel right now so i feel like it would be something oh. people would enjoy watching you think you're gonna be the new review bra i can certainly hope so <laughs> he's pretty he's pretty great i love him He's one of yeah. The, yeah, he's one of the best creators out there. He's wholesome, he's genuine, and uh, he has so much, so many good messages. I don't really watch his food reviews anymore, but I love his videos on uh, on random stuff, like when he shares his thoughts on, on stuff or, you know, advice, or uh, even when he makes videos when he just wants to vent about something. They're so great. You don't get a whole lot of creators like him anymore. Yeah. Oh, it's probably it's so nice about everything. It's it's probably gonna come back because people are thirsty for this. People want this. I mean, there there's a reason why it's successful. It's because it's uh, you know a lot of people want that kind of uh, that kind of stuff or or uh, you know uh, creators like Critical who is also pretty wholesome, even if uh, he's, he's different, but they're they're kind of there's a lot of they have a lot in 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 common these guys and um you know they're not they're not bland and and sanitized but they're not edgy for the sake of being edgy and it's it's like yeah people like that people people like that and it's 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 it feels good to to watch that you know you don't feel really like a normie but uh, it's not stuff that makes you feel bad or that makes you angry or uh, like uh, like all these political channels that uh, just thrive on on controversy and and shit like that. We need more people like Review Bra, definitely. And uh, you know, if you can be one of those, then uh, you have all my support. It's like it's just relatable and you just want to be like be his friend and i, I feel like that's why yeah I like to watch him. yeah 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 remember in the first days of real tv 
uh, that's what some people said about some uh, people who were on on, on real TV uh, shows before it was like so scripted and so predictable and so shitty. Uh, the the first, yeah. the very first, um, the very first real TV shows had some uh, were kind of fresh, you know, because even if they were absolutely stupid and uh, you know uh, really dumb, there there was some 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 kind of genuine vibe to them like youtube was in the beginning you know just people posting their videos not trying to have a exceptionally good video quality or audio quality or uh, just being genuine just posting their stuff and uh i think it's just people trying to have a good time and yeah <laughs> I, I think, think we're going back to this. Old school YouTube from like 2006. Because the internet has become so complicated in the past years. There's so much between all the between all the SJWs and people like that making the 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 internet a minefield when you never know what's gonna set them off, and be, with all the corporations. You know, censoring websites like Reddit, like Facebook, Instagram, and uh, all the the hoops that you're gonna that you have to go through just to be able to see stuff and comment on stuff. The internet has become too complicated. It was better when it was simpler, and I think a lot of people are realizing that, consciously or unconsciously, and we are going. To come back to simpler stuff. I mean, maybe not as the mainstream, but there will be a trend. It it's growing. It's it's obvious that it's going to continue growing of simpler stuff, wholesome stuff, stuff that it's not not you know scripted with like all these fucking prank. Oh, oh, oh sorry, like all these fucking prank channels were painfully obviously fake we want we want real shit it's as simple as this we want more real shit and uh yeah i think it's not just you and me i think it's a lot of people who are, are, are tired of this complicated shit full of you know appearances and uh artificial stuff you know we want more real shit yeah you know, that kind of bounces back to what we were talking before was like the advertisements and stuff yeah so companies becoming more and more corporate they're bringing bringing a profit which yeah. makes everything kind of complicated because like you need to turn a profit but at the same time you got to figure out how to turn a profit without making your platform a, a bad place to be on yep yeah it's kind of gone on room and uh yeah, I don't mind the ads, of course, but, you know, they come with the burden of the site having to be advertiser-friendly, and it's worse and worse, advertisers are getting more and more, you know, cautious. Maybe this trend is going to reverse itself, but with so many sites failing to turn a profit, even after 10 years of being up, I don't think so. Venture capitalists are not so hot anymore about you know stuff like social networks it's more about physical real life stuff like all these uh these scooters you know like the bird and uh stuff like that uh, that's what attracts people now you know uber eats or stuff you can buy stuff you can use and not so much platforms of uh, expression and um, yeah people want more real shit and we want the internet to be simpler again and there's gonna be there's probably gonna be websites who which allow us this in the future they may not be the biggest ones but I hope I can only hope that it's gonna become a real trend and there's gonna be a wave of simpler, freer, realer internet soon. I feel like we're gonna get there like 
2019 is probably going to be the turning point for stuff like that because of all the outrage that we had yeah. over that kind of stuff last year. So I feel people are going to try and start fix it. Yeah, I feel that too. And it may be some dumb optimism, but I'm pretty good at predicting things usually uh, when it comes to internet and trends and stuff like that. So uh, I really, I really hope, and if I can be a part of it, then it would be awesome. You know, I try my best and, uh, and people are grateful for it. I get so many messages of people who are grateful for me to be pushing this trend of being real, of being simple, of, you know, no artificial shit. And yeah, if that can be the 2019 big trend, then, oh my God, I will buy a hundred dollar bottle of wine and, and drink it to the health of uh, of this trend. And uh, I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. Fingers crossed, man. Fingers fucking crossed. They can only hope for the better future of the internet. Yeah, and the best we can do is when we see people who do real shit, give them likes, share their content, talk about them to our friends, acquaintances, or people who like that same kind of stuff, and uh, give them five stars uh, on, you know... If, if they have a podcast or stuff like that or iTunes or whatever you we, we gotta support the, we gotta support the the troops man we gotta support the the soldiers of the free speech and uh, of uh, genuine content really gotta do this there's there's that's the best way that we can bring this this new trend that we want that's the that's the realest stuff that we can do is drop some likes, subscribe, and stuff like that. Yeah. We often underestimate the influence that we can have uh, on, you know, trends. Sometimes it seems like trends are fabricated by companies or, you know, all the, the industry plants, and uh, we talk about that all the time, but... We have a real influence. We can vote. We can vote with our likes, with uh, the time we spend on uh, watching good channels, on, uh, you know, s good memers, people who are real. And we should all be mindful of that, I think, and uh, keep doing that more and more to help bring... Uh, to help make the internet a better place because uh, lately it has not been so good well i think we're on the turning point though so yeah yeah hopefully, yeah hopefully i don't think it can get any worse than what it was last year oh it can always get worse but uh yeah we are we are on the turning point that is that is pretty obvious yeah and i hope that um things are gonna be better I trying to do my best to help bring that new era of of a better internet. Uh, gotta keep fighting the good fight. Just gotta keep your head up and keep pushing through. Yeah, like the Beastie Boys said it so good, so well. Fight for your right to party. <laughs> That's one way to put it. Fight for your right to meme. Fight for your right to good memes. No more meme censorship. Yeah. So sick of this censorship. It's, 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 it's not getting worse lately, but it's not getting better. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I hope. I can only hope. I don't, no, I cannot only hope. We can, we can do things, but... We're not as powerless as we like to think. We all have a uh, part to play in the grand scheme of things. And everyone can bring change. And if we, you know, if we do it together, we can do great things. I believe that. 
the internet's been pretty good about coming together and working on stuff that they believe in. Yeah. So I feel, I feel like it, it'll be okay. Yeah, that's one of the best aspects of the internet. We are good at this. We're good at coming together and doing great things in, in groups, you know. Strengths come, in, uh, come from a union. Oh! One of my rats is eating the paint of my walls. Uh, what dumb shit. Uh, yeah, I think these, uh, these good words are... Uh, 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 well, it's been two hours and a half. It's, uh, it's a good time to end now. I think we've said it all. I, what do you think? Any last words? Uh, I think I said all I've needed to say. Great, then. Uh, it's the end of episode 11 of Mojito, the first podcast on the internet. Uh, you can find the podcast on YouTube and SoundCloud only at the moment, but very soon it's going to be available everywhere where you get your podcast Apple Podcasts, iTunes, uh, Audio Boom, Podbay, Podcast Addict, etc. etc. Uh, you only need a few days to, to finish setting that up. And uh, I mean, I'm so slow at editing that by the time this episode will be released, it will probably already be the case. So, um, yeah. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for supporting. Uh, for all my patrons on Patreon, thanks a lot. Your help is tremendously appreciated. The uh, Mojito official theme song is um, Groove Selector by Shred. Link in the description. And yeah, see you guys next time. Same, uh, same bad time, same bad channel, I was gonna say. <laughs> you know, thanks all for listening and thanks to you Eric for being my guest today it was a great conversation I had a good time thank you for having me no problem man bye